Uh, shalom. Um, how's everybody doing? Green cards to the creator, not uh, of heaven and earth. Uh, I'd like to say blessings to brothers and sisters out here that's uh, discovering the truth, looking to find who they are, understand that we are the people that we must adhere to the covenant from the Creator. Uh, the title of this video just talks about the laws of Moses and not dealing with a false matter. And uh, with this being said, uh, we like going to content about uh, the this basically speaks about brothers and sisters lying to one another, not being truthful and honest, not only to a people, but not being true to God. Now, due to the fact that we are chosen, we are given laws to abide by, to take heed and to obey the covenant, even in our captivity. A lot of our people disagree with that. And this is why we are under the curse. This is why we are constantly dying and being punished. Man, we're just going through a lot right about now. And it's time for us to just wake up and get an understanding of what it is that we should be doing. So, with that being said, I'm gonna start off with the laws. I'm gonna start with Exodus 20 and 7, where it says, Thou shalt not take the name of thy uh, God in vain. The most high will not hold him guiltless and take of his name in vain. Uh, what we're ta talking about is that when you make a false accusation according to the creator, you are being a false witness, meaning that you are using somebody's name and saying something that they did not say. So we just got this thing where we deal with false uh, People making accusations that's not true. And it shouldn't be like that. When it comes to making false accusation against the Most High, the judgment for that punishment is death. And uh, I'm gonna go into content and show you Leviticus 19 and 12. When it says, and ye shall not swear by my name falsely, neither shall thou profane the name of thy God, I am the most high. Also, we look up in Deuteronomy 5 and 11. It also speaks of, thou shalt not take the name of the most high thy God in vain. The most high will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Uh, Deuteronomy 5 and 20 indicates it says, well, let's go go get right here, right? This is talking about taking the most high's name in mind. And let's go to Leviticus 24. And we're going to start in verse 10. This is a testimony that, uh, according to the laws. What it says, uh, Looking at a story about an Israelite woman who had a son with an Egyptian man who son cursed and blasphemed the name of the Most High. And uh, when that event took place, the Most High tells you whoever witnessed this event taking place is the first person to stone the uh, victim. 
I'm going to start in verse 10, where it says, And the son of an Israelitish woman, whose father was an Egyptian, went out among the children of Yasharal. This son of the Israelitish woman and the men of Yasharal strove together in the camp. And the Israelitish woman's son blasphemed the name of the Most High and cursed. And he brought him unto Moses. And his mother's name was Shalomith one of the breed of the tribe of Dan. And they put him inward that the minds of the Most High might be told. And the Most High spake unto Moses, saying, Bring forth him that have cursed without the camp, and let all the, that heard him lay their hands upon his head, and let all the congregation stone him. Thou shalt speak unto the children of Yahshua, saying, Whosoever curse of his God, shall bear his sin, and he that blasphemed the name of the Most High, he shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall certainly stone him, as well as the stranger, as he that is born in the land, and he blasphemed the name of the Most High, shall be put to death. So, this is very necessary when you talk about making accusations or what you want to call them statements against somebody that uh, you feel as though that's uh, making an allegation. And that's why the most I tell you when we're going to the law about witnesses and we're going to look up in Deuteronomy 19 when the most I tell you and a person shall be convicted by two or three witnesses, just not by one. Look at Deuteronomy 19 chapter, we go to verse 15, it said, One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin, or any sin that he sinned at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. A false witness rise up against any man to testify against him that which is strong, then both the men between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Most High, before the priests and the judges, which shall be in those days. And the judges shall make diligent inquisition, and behold, if the witness be a false witness, and have testified falsely against his brother, then shall ye do unto him as he has thought to have done unto the to his brother. So shall thou put the evil away from among you. Right? Those which remain shall hear and fear and shall henceforth commit no more any such evil among you. And thy eyes shall not pity, but life shall go forth life. Eye for eye, two for two, hand for hand, and foot for foot. So this thing is that when you make a false obligation according to something that's being said, and it turns out that that uh, statement that you made according to that person, it be false. That means that whatever it is, the punishment that you thought to do to that individual, it shall be done unto you. This is... Exodus 21 and 24, what he just said, I for I, two for two, and for him, and for foot. So, we have to be real careful about the allegations that we make according to whatever you feel that someone said. If you don't have a second witness, then uh, basically you just make a mistake and there's, there's no proof. And the most I'm telling you, that there has to be at least two to three witnesses in order to show proof that the allegations is true. Now, I like to move to the other part. When we deal with the situation about a false matter. And when we look at according to Uh, Deuteronomy 5 and 20 says, Neither shall thou bear false witness against thy neighbor. You see what I'm saying? If you make a, a statement against someone that's 
not true. Again, we talking about the witnesses. You have to bear, you have to face the judgment what you thought to do to them, it will happen to you. So let me read in the testimony according to this law. I think this is up there also in uh, Deuteronomy 23 and 1. And it says, no, no, Exodus 23, that is. Let's go there. Exodus 23 and 1. Exodus 23 and 1. It says, Thou shalt not raise a false report, put not thy hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Let's go into the testimony in Numbers. The Most High used Moses to send two Israelite spies to spy on a Hamite land. They bear the false report. The Most High had them killed because they lied. They gave them false report. Let's go to Numbers. Looking at this in uh, in the thirteen chapter, right? I'm gonna start at verse one, where it says, and "The Most High spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Yisrael. Every tribe of their fathers shall you send the men, every one a ruler among them." Moses, by the Commandment of the Most High sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Yashra. These were their names of the tribe of Reuben, Shamwa, the son of Zakar, of the tribe of Simeon, Jephat, the son of Hori, of the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of Jephna, of the tribe of Issachar, Ibal, the son of Joseph, of the tribe of Ephraim, Rachel, the son of Nun. The tribe of Benjamin, Kalti, the son of Raphu, of the tribe of Zebulon, Gadiel, the son of Zadi, of the tribe of Joseph, mainly of the tribe of Manasseh, Gadai, the son of Susa, of the tribe of Dan, Amil, the son of Gamadi, of the tribe of Asher, Sir, the son of Michael, of the tribe of Naphtali, Nabi, the son of Rashi. Tribe of Gad, Joel, the son of Machai. These are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Hosea, the son of Nun, Hashua. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, Get you up this, this way, southward, and go up into the mountains and see the land what it is, and the people that dwell up therein whether you be strong or weak, few or many. What the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what cities they be that they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds, and what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not. Be ye of good courage and bring of the fruits of the land. Now the time was time of the first right rapes. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Ben unto the pod, and men come to Hamath. They ascend by the south and came unto the farm. There are Armand, Hishah, and Tarmay, the children of Anat were now Hebron was built seven years before Zone in Egypt. And they came into the brook unto the brook of Esco cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grape, and they bear it between two upon a staff, and they brought up a, a pomegranate and of the figs. The place was called the Brook Esco because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Yasharal cut down from thence. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days, and they went and came to Moses and to 
Mary to all the congregation of the children of Yahshua and to the wilderness of Paran, to Kabir, and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation to show them the truth of the land. And they told them and said, We came unto the land whither thou sendest us, and surely a floor with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong. That dwell in the land and the cities are walls are very great. The more which are the children of Anak there, and the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea, by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome. But the men that went up with them said, we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Yahshua. And the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. All the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the great giants and the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sights. Now this is what the punishment was when they brought up this fall before. Now, all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Yahshua murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, For God, that we had died in the land of Egypt, and for God, we had died in the wilderness. And woeful how the Most High brought us unto this land to fall by the straw, that our wives and our children should be prey. Were it not better for us to, be, to return to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, Let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Yahshua. Yahshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephthah, which were them that searched the land, rented their clothes, and they spake unto all the company of the children of Yahshua, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. The Most High delight in us that we will, and he will bring us into this land and give it us a land which flow with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Most High, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Most High is with us. Fear them not. Right? Let's go to all this right here. Right? Let's go to all this. Basically, what we're looking at, it says on the server, okay. I have to find the scripture, but basically, the moral of the story is that they went against the laws of the creator and bear the false report. The most high had them killed. Oh, you have to understand, you have to seek the law in order to do the law. You have to learn the law and to study the law. So um, this has been a, a, a minor video. I'm going to do more videos like this, uh, learning the laws so that we be able to apply uh, to the uh, covenant. And I pray and I, you know what I'm saying, hope that we all come to understanding that this is something that's very important to us to know who we are, keep the laws of the Creator. Right. So I'm going to just end this video, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to say,
shalom, peace and blessings to our faithful our God, and peace and blessings to the people uh, across the four corners of the earth. And uh, man, keep, keep y'all, you know what I'm saying, and keep the problem. Shalom.